I am ready to go whenever you are. All right, indeed. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the General Geekery Podcast, the podcast where we like to geek out about all the things we like to geek out about with no remorse, no regrets, and with all the enthusiasm in the world. Yep, pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. As always, this is uh, Donald Kaczynski, and with me, as always, is the amazing Hannah Kubiak. Hey, Hannah. Hello. And, uh... Today's topic, um, Hannah has um, decided to uh, take the reins on this one, as uh, you were quite enthusiastic about this. Yes, yes, I am. So, I, um, tell us. <clears throat> what sure. So, what we're going to be talking about today is, it's kind of um, a theme in literature that I've been trying to pin down for a while, and I'm still not quite sure what you would call it. But I'm going to be talking about a couple of books that contain this theme, and... Um, I noticed this when I was basically just reading a bunch of books and the ones that I really liked all had a couple of things in common. Um, So the three books we're going to be talking about today um, are Catch-22, Fight Club, and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And And we're going to kind of talk about what they say about society and what what we can uh, what we can do to make society better than the worlds that are portrayed in these books i uh, indeed okay so <clears throat> for, for for me i've i've read fight club fight club is um one of the few among those is one of the is the only one among those 3 that i have read mm-hmm. but but catch 22 um that is that's a heck of a name because that's a uh, that's a term that's pouring used coffee. Cost- I, do, do you hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did. No, no worries. It is coffee being poured. No shame. No shame for the coffee being poured. But, <laughs> but for Catch Twenty Two, I mean, that's a. I mean, I, I haven't read the no- the novel, but I've heard the term used constantly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a constant term in our culture now, and I think, yeah. it, and it stemmed <laughs> from that book. It did, yeah. So, yeah, what is a uh, catch 22 as we know it um um without looking at a dictionary quiz (laughs) quiz um without looking at a dictionary or anything like that i'm gonna say um a catch 22 is um is basically a lose-lose to represent a lose-lose situation like it's Mm -hmm. a paradoxical choice where your actions will result in a negative reaction no matter what right yeah so it's um yeah, it's basically damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. Yep. And uh, the whole so yeah, let's start with let's start with Catch Twenty Two then. Um, so base the basic premise of this of this book is there. It's about a bombardier in World War Two who is trying to get out of flying missions, <clears throat> and there are a lot of very confusing things that go on at his, at his base and during the war and um, a lot of crazy bureaucratical, just pish posh, I think is (laughs) what word that I'm going to use for that. Um, So uh, Donald, I sent you a, I sent you an excerpt from the book and uh since this excerpt is a conversation i was thinking that we could read it together yeah sure absolutely yeah Yeah. so can you um can you start with the first line which is where this fellow named doc danica says you're wasting your time gotcha (laughs) all right you're wasting your time doc danica was forced to tell him can't you ground someone who's crazy oh sure i have to there's a rule saying i have to there's no rule saying I have to ground anyone who's crazy. Then why don't you ground me? I'm crazy. Ask Clevenger. Clevenger? Where is Clevenger? You find Clevenger and I'll ask him. Then ask any of the others. They'll tell you how crazy I am. They're crazy. Then why don't you ground them? Turn the page. Turn the page. Why don't they think? Why don't they ask me to ground them? Because they're crazy. That's why. Of course they're di- of course they're crazy. Doctor Nika replied. I just told you they're crazy, didn't I? And you can't let crazy people decide whether you're crazy or not, can you? 
Yossarian looked at him soberly and tried another approach. Is Orr crazy? He sure is, Dr. Nika said. Can you ground him? I sure can, but first he has to ask me to. That's part of the rule. Then why doesn't he ask you to? Because he's crazy, Dr. Nika said. He has to be crazy to keep flying combat missions after all of the close calls he's had. Sure, I, I can ground Orr, but first he has to ask me to. That's all he has to do to be grounded? That's all. Let him ask me. And then you can ground him? <laughs> no, then I can't ground him. You mean, there's a catch? Sure there's a catch, Dr. Nika replied. Catch 22. Anyone who wants to get out of combat duty isn't really crazy. And the book goes on to say, There was only one catch, and that was catch 22 which specified that a concern for one's own safety in the face of dangers that were real and immediate was the process of a rational mind. Orr was crazy and could be grounded. All he had to do was ask. And as soon as he did, he would no longer be crazy and would have to fly more missions. Orr would be crazy to fly more missions and sane if he didn't. But if he was sane, he had to fly them. If he flew them, then he was crazy and didn't have to. But if he didn't want to, he was sane and had to. Yossarian was moved very deeply by the absolute simplicity of this clause of Catch-22 and let out a respectful whistle. That's some catch, that Catch-22. So that's basically the kind of conversations people have throughout this entire book. Dang. It's just circular stuff like that where no matter what you do, it it ends badly for you. God. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah. Like I like I totally get I totally get like that was definitely like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation that like our interpretation of catch twenty two is in like the jargon that's used today, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, the, the... it's it's slightly different. The catch twenty two is basically no matter what you do, the result is the same. That 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 is such insanity I can't even begin mm -hmm. to fathom. Yeah. Which is weird because the definition, somebody said, like, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Only it continues but, to be the same result. And then. Yeah, but this, the, the catch 22 is basically you do different things every time and this result is the same, no matter what you do. Right. Right. Yeah. So is that maybe the the uh, the mark of an insane system as opposed to an insane person? Yeah, I I, I, I would I would say so. I, I mean, dude, that was deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. But yeah, I would definitely say so, just based on that conversation, because it just seems mm -hmm. like. Well, I mean, this is a rule that you have in place. So, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the system is insane be because yeah. of this, co this contradictory rule. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a quote by this fellow named Christopher Buckley. I think he wrote a introduction to catch 22, like one of the, one of the uh, editions of it or something. Um, he says, I can't think of another book title that has so permeated the English language that we use it almost every day, usually to describe some encounter with the Department of Motor Vehicles. My God, that <laughs> that is so true. It hurts. We got all sorts of like all sorts of forms you have to sign, et cetera, et cetera. And they send you here and they send you there and then they send you back to where you were and you have to sign something else. But. You've it, signed it in the wrong place, so you have to go back. <laughs> it, it, is it kind? Is it, is it kind of sad to say that I've never actually had any of those kinds of problems with the DMV? Well, the DMV in Wisconsin is actually quite nice. I used to live in Illinois, and it is it is a true circle of hell. The Illinois DMV. Oh man! But since moving to Wisconsin, I've actually haven't had any problems. Okay, so it's not just me. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, no. I, I, you're we not. Have... You're not. You're not special. They're just nicer in Wisconsin. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I thought. I thought. I thought it was a little bit crazy because I was like, "This isn't so bad." Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But apparently, it's not. So. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're, if, um, there's a couple of other sort of themes that run through this book, and I'm just going to touch on them, um, 
and uh, well, of course, um, mm -hmm. there's paradox and impossibility, which we kind of ran into when we were reading. Right. Um, miscommunication, the insanity of war, senseless death, and disillusionment. <clears throat> So uh, Joseph Heller actually was a bombardier in World War II. He flew 60 missions out of Corsica, which is an island in the Mediterranean. Oh, jeez. Um, and um, <laughs> I wrote here, he was raised by his mother. His father died when he was five. And he was a jokester. He liked to play a lot of practical jokes. And his mother said to him, Joey, you've got a twisted brain. <laughs> <laughs> And that made me laugh. Um, but he based some of the stuff in this book on his his sort of uh, experiences in World War II as a bombardier. And in fact, there is a moment in the book that kind of begins the main character, Yosarian's path of disillusionment and want not unwillingness to cooperate with the insane system. And that was uh, witnessing the senseless death of this young gunner in a plane on one of his missions. And um, Joseph Heller actually based this, based this scene off of something that really happened to him in a raid over Avignon. Okay. Yeah. So it sort of branches off of that. So um interesting yeah i'm trying to think here if there's anything else about that oh yes if you're interested in this book and uh you're not really a reader there is an awesome audiobook of it that i swear i've listened to this audiobook like five or six times <laughs> <laughs> it's um it's Catch-22, read by, oh, wait, maybe I should have known who this was before I started talking about it. <laughs> Please stand by. <laughs> I like that it's the carnival music. When we're... <laughs> oh, okay. It's narrated by J.O. Sanders. Okay. J.O. Sanders? Yep. Yeah. All right, that 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 would definitely be looking into. Like uh -huh. ever since this pandemic um um went down, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and uh, mm -hmm. um audi audiobooks. Oh just, yeah, me too. Just just because I've been doing a lot of like uh, side stuff and just like doing all, just to keep my mind busy and just listening to all that just seems mm -hmm. it seems a lot better. Like just to it get all that knowledge in there. Yep. Yep. I love I love harvesting knowledge. I definitely do. I'm not a Ravenclaw like you, but I do like to know things. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I am a Ravenclaw and, among Hufflepuffs. Yep. Yep. So another thing that you could do is uh, there was a, a mini series made in 2019 um, um, called Catch 22. It was part. It was produced and partially directed by George Clooney. Oh, yeah, um, I heard about and, that. Yeah, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. And it uh, features actors such as Christopher Abbott, Hugh Ooh. Laurie, and George Clooney makes a cameo appearance as well. You, as, s you sold me on Hugh Laurie. Lieutenant Scheisskopf, You so is funny because <laughs> that literally in German means shithead. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> So, but yes. you have, but you have absolutely sold me on this with Hugh Laurie. You yeah, ab Hugh Laurie is wonderful. He plays a guy named uh, Lieutenant DeCoverly, whose first name is redacted, even <laughs> in the book. When they mention him, it's just like <laughs> it's just like Lieutenant Blankety Blank DeCoverly, because <laughs> he's so mysterious. That's that's <laughs> and badass. That's hilarious. Lieutenant was... Redacted Redacted to cover leaf. Uh, <laughs> like Ron Swanson or something. <laughs> that information is personal. Oh my god. 
so that's catch 22 i love it because it makes me feel like a sane person fair 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 enough it, it, i'm like okay the world the world is insane because like weird things happen all the time like one time it, the conversation that i had with an energy company that shall remain nameless but when I moved apartments, they charged they charged me for my old apartment as well. So I was double charged for two different oh. places, and I had like I had printed out my my request to transfer the account on a, on my move day. So this really shouldn't have happened. And I called them, and I literally sent them a picture of the the form that said when everything was switching over yeah and i said well see here you've made a mistake because i canceled my service at the old address to be canceled on this date so there's no way that the next month i should have been charged for this correct right and they said well there's nothing we can do about it we're charging you and i'm like well you see here mm-hmm I did everything right in the paperwork and you made a mistake. And they're like, yep. well, maybe, but we're not refunding you. And I said, why not? And they're just like, we're not refunding you. I was like, but the proof is here. So even if you're logical and rational, uh, the people who provide you with your electricity can screw you over. <laughs> how so very dare they? That's Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you, but, don't you don't you guys love capitalism? Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Let's move on to our next book. Ooh, which one are we doing next? Fight Club, the one that you're familiar uh, with. Ah, yes. So Fight Club is the story of a guy who he basically feels he feels trapped in the world and in order to in, in order to fight against the society, he starts a fight club, which is basically these men get together in a basement or in a parking lot and just punch the living shit out of each other to feel more alive. Yeah, and and actually, if I'm not mistaken, it's all ju- it all of the people that are part of the fight club were mainly just like people that just. How do I explain this? People who didn't fit into society, right? Kind of, yeah. It mainly just people that just are just run of the mill, just like going through the motions, but have like so much like pent up frustration inside mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and yes. they and they and they don't have an outlet to like mm-hmm. let that out. The rage of not having an outlet, yeah, because it's there's uh, there's some there's some themes in here that are. Um, like isolation, not fitting into society, um, where sort of, it's kind of similar to Catch-22, where if you don't know how to navigate the world, then you you become a problem person. Ah, uh, just like politics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, violence, chaos, societal breakdown. It's uh, just sort of a, when you... When you when you smother somebody, that's going to explode at some point. Don't bury the time bomb; it'll Don't, just cre- yeah. it, it'll just still it'll, it'll still explode anyway, and just have sand everywhere. Yep. <laughs> and um, something that stands out in Fight Club is there's this sort of theme of emasculation as well. Um, and it's, and uh, because there's, there's sort of this, um, there's this quote from the movie, actually, the 19, uh, I want to say the 1999 or 98. Yeah. 99, 98. It was that, it was movie. that. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, Brad Pitt and, um. Edward Norton. Yeah. Edward Norton. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can find. Although looking back at it now, were we really supposed to believe that just out of nowhere, Brad Pitt is playing a character who just sells soap? I don't know. Okay. So. I just found this random. 
okay mm-hmm. random quote here about what the what the world is like in fight club the world that he's trying to free himself of it goes like this you buy furniture you tell yourself this is the last sofa i will ever need in my life buy the sofa then for a couple years you're satisfied that no matter what ah an ad popped up (laughs) no matter what goes wrong at least you've got your sofa issue handled then the right set of dishes then the perfect bed the drapes the rug then you're trapped in your lovely nest and the things you used to own, now they own you. So Eek. kind of talking about consumerist culture as well and about how how having things sort of traps us and makes us docile and not really living up to our full potential. And it's sort of like instead of empowering us, our society just wants to control us kind of keep us keep us under control and so the fight club is sort of this this explosion of um masculine aggression towards society and in general and um i think that this book is a really good example of how toxic masculinity is a response to emasculation and vice versa yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. De- I can definitely see that. Like, yeah. g- like given the story and just like how the Fight Club is presented, both in book and and especially in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I can. De- I can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's. It's. It's definitely trying to say something about manhood and what is that. Now that we don't have to go out and hunt our food, for example, and stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. And the book begins with this character who remains unnamed throughout. He's he's kind of thrill-seeking a little bit. Um, And he goes to all of these all of these meetings that are like for cancer survivors support groups he goes to visit support groups every night just because people there was something about people really listen to you when they think you're dying oh that's right so it starts with him at this at this um support group for survivors of testicular cancer called remaining men together oh my god and um so it's sort of from the very beginning hinting at this question of what makes a man a man you know and the in the fight club the offshoot project from fight club is project mayhem which is basically just causing trouble around the city setting cars on fire mm-hmm. Uh, taking like like swapping the um, swapping street lights or something like that, mm-hmm. just causing chaos and anarchy that, in its truest form. Yeah, and something that they do to punish people who aren't who've pledged themselves to Project Mayhem and fall short. They actually they actually will swarm you and cut off your testicles. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> to tell you you're no longer one of them so it's like oh yeah you know if you're you gotta be you gotta be tough and like an animal you know so each extreme expects these people to be an animal you know like either a wild savage rabid animal or just a a, a, a docile beaten obedient animal and what's the middle ground really can can mankind be human without teetering to one side and becoming an animal yep that's a very good that's a good that's a good question yeah mm-hmm. that's a very good question yeah that yeah fight club is all about extremes but mm-hmm. it's it's always been a story and film all about extremes mm-hmm. and jeez I, yeah. I I I forgot about some of that stuff. It's been a while since I've read the book or even seen the movie. So yeah, 
but yeah. but I mean, of course, they're going to keep some details out of the movie. I don't even uh-huh. re- I didn't even remember so, some stuff that was in there, but I forgot about that in the book. I'm like, oh god, that's right. In the movie, it was really weird because it kind of reminded me of Catch Twenty Two a little bit, actually, the way that Project Mayhem would work, because they had sort of rules that didn't exactly make sense, and um, they were just sort of saying, well, no. The first rule of Project Mayhem is you don't ask questions, so you're not allowed to ask any questions, but you're also supposed to know what you're doing. And um, there's, I think, in the in the movie, that part where they decide that the protagonist has betrayed them, the guy just is standing, the, the uh, guy is just standing there and holds up a knife and says, it says, you know what's going to happen. We have to take your balls. <laughs> like, just very nonchalant about it. You... Like, he was just going to let it happen. They're oh, like, all right, geez. here we go. And then when he, like, fights back, they're surprised. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> just, just like, eunuch. Uh, what? Now. Now is the time. Eunuchy. Snip, snip. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jack Sparrow. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so that's, so that's Fight Club. Um... And the the last the last an insane system that I want to talk to you about is the one presented in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. All right, this one I've only I, I've only heard bits and pieces about. I don't know the full thing about this. So, so, so it's about a mental hospital where a um. This, this nurse runs the mental hospital very strictly and all of her patients are completely under her control. They fear her um, and they're, 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 they're docile. They're on the docile end of the oh. spectrum we have here. And then this new patient comes in whose oh. name is Randall McMurphy. And right. he is a, um, he is not insane. He's just badly behaved and the system couldn't handle him. So they put him in a mental hospital and it's about yeah. how he shakes things up and kind of leads a revolution in this, in this hospital. And so it's got a lot of the same themes as as Catch-22 and Fight Club, it's about it's about this insane system and people fighting against it. Um, there, there are themes of sanity and insanity. Uh-huh. Uh, so the, the reason that the nurse has control over all of them is because they've been labeled as insane. Right. And if you treat someone like they're insane, you control them. And... So um, a lot of these people actually are there by choice because they feel like they don't fit into society. Like I... there's this there's this guy who he is, who lives in the mental hospital who is very intelligent, very well spoken, but he's a homosexual. And uh... um, and there's. In the time that this book was written, I think like 1960 or something. Oh yeah, there was there was no place in the world for people like him. So, yeah, 1962. So just just people who don't fit into society. Um, other other themes are shame, infantilization, emasculation, society stifling human nature. So the in the mental hospital, the patients are all controlled and like like robots almost, because um, they are they're given like like memory altering drugs. They are treated oh. like children. They have this sort of uh, morning meeting where the nurse will try to. Uh, get to the bottom of some of their psychological issues but they do it in a big group and she'll like focus on one of them and it'll be 
humiliating for them, but everybody else feels good because if she's focused on one person, then she's not terrorizing them. And then they get like rewarded for jumping on the bandwagon and um, putting each other down and stuff. So it's, Jeez. yeah, it's like an evil kindergarten is the way that she runs it. Um, She's Louise. Yeah, yeah. And it just, I, I'm trying to find a, an example of this. Um, of one of these meetings that they have. But um, yeah, if you're interested in this story, the book is by Ken Kesey. And then there's a play also. Um, I don't really remember who wrote the play, but um, there's a play. There's also the movie with Jack Nicholson in it. Ooh. Yeah. It was made in like the... Uh, oh, I uh, totally forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I, 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 I'm actually looking up the film right now. Okay, let's oh, see. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 1975 uh, American film starring Jack Nicholson, Louise Fletcher. Ooh, Louise Fletcher. Nice. Well, Sam C. Sandy Lassack, Brad Dourif, mm-hmm. Brad Dourif, Danny DeVito, and Christopher Lloyd. Okay, all right. I'm, 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 liking the, I'm liking the sound of this just from, like, the cast of it, so. Yeah. But yeah, that sounds really, scr- really screwed up. Like, th- on- honestly, that's like something that I would probably find. Th- just the description of that book just sounds like something I would find in like a recurring nightmare. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, that's. I hate it. It's 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 stomach <laughs> it's stomach turning. Yeah, and just the Im- imagery that he uses in the book as well. Like he describes the nurse as this like this spider. She's almost. She's just dressed in her starched white uniform and she's like everything at all feminine about her is just hidden under this sheet of ice, you know. Eesh. She's just like a robot herself, but she's the robot in charge, you know. She she is the motherboard. Mhm. She is the motherboard. I caramba. Mm-hmm. Like that is mm. Yeah, I I got I got like 15 chills up my spine just from like just from the visualization of that from the words. <laughs> oh, well. Yes. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I want to read this now. This book. I'm just <laughs> flipping through it a little bit. Um, we got all the time in the world, so <laughs> indeed. So, so yeah, all of the all of these all of these all of these books, all these novels, Catch Twenty Two, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Fight Club, all of them, three differing examples of just crazy, insane types of worlds, but all of them yep. carry the same things of just like insanity um just yeah just total just society is whack whack society yeah and it's it's kind of i think this is very interesting because these these books kind of show the extremes that people can go to with trying to what is the word i'm trying to think of Like teaching, teaching boys how to be men. It's really hard to f- like not go to one of these extremes. Um, yeah. Like I just um, I, I've mentioned this video at um, one of our earlier episodes, but it wasn't. I couldn't remember what it was called, but I found it. It's okay. called How Movies Teach Manhood, and it's a TED Talk by Colin Stokes. It's, oh, yeah, that's right. You mentioned that really early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really good. So he was looking at different movies and kind of what message it sends to it sends to boys, and then also what message, message it sends to girls as well. Right. And um, 
Boys get a message from movies mostly that you use violence to defeat the bad guy and then you get the girl. And so we we talk a lot about like girl power and stuff, but what exactly is boy power? That's a question that this guy asks in this video. And um, he, mm -hmm. he said basically like, I, I don't want to teach my son that violence is the answer and that women are a prize that I can win. Um, and what he basically, he said, I want to sort of foster a new way that we can teach our sons how to be men, which is show our sons that a man trusts his sisters, respects them and wants to be on their team. Yeah. That's... Like, yeah. Yeah. Which I... I think fits pretty well right in the middle of, um, the two extremes that we've been talking about here in these books. Yeah, it, it like it, it's 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 the stable middle ground that is mm -hmm. like the straight and narrow. And the thing is, like honestly, a lot of people have actually been like bringing that up, especially in like especially since the turn of the century. Is um just like we see all these developments and just like uh, more mm -hmm. like positive female role models in uh, literature, mm -hmm. in uh, film and television, and everything like that. And it's great, yeah. but even then, like the like all all role models for like young men for boys and everything like that is usually just like superheroes mm -hmm. and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. And so I think in v different ways throughout these these th these three books show these two extremes and the way that people try to way that people whether it be other men or whether it be these sort of uh Do domineering um, mother figures like this nurse, you know, um, mm -hmm. that I think what these books tell me is that if you try to, if you try to control something, it, you're going to either squash it or it's going to explode. Hmm. So the, basically the answer to teaching, teaching boys how to be men is there's one, there's one extreme where you tell them, stop being such a all that stuff. And then there's, you could just do what they do in a fight club and cut off their balls because then they won't hurt anybody, you know, right. like that neither of those are good options. Because one promotes violence and one promotes just docility, you know. And um, there's got to be something in the middle there where it's not – where I think, I think a lot of the time people, people tell boys that it's bad to be a boy because you're, far, you're part of the patriarchy now. It's like not necessarily. Just like it's your it's – your, choices that right. make you who you are not your assigned gender you know <laughs> yeah yeah like and i and, and i know like uh, people are like i've heard some parents even say that sometimes about when how they have to like uh treat their treat their sons and everything like that it's mm -hmm. it, it's a constant like thing that is happening in society it's just not given as mm -hmm. much spotlight on yeah i mean yeah, it's like a, it's it is a prevalent issue, and people do worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, that's that's everything that I that's everything that I wanted to say about this. Yeah, uh, I love I love these books. Um, they, yeah. oh, they're just so good, so heart wrenching. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to find the uh, audio book that uh, you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like like I'm like I'm gonna that be searching. So good. Yeah, I'm going to be searching for that one uh, ASAP. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, like, like obviously Catch-22 is, like, a, a name that is a fixture in, Amer in American uh, media 
because mm-hmm. I mean we have a term just based off of it. Mm-hmm. And and it's kind of insane just like looking honestly I I think Catch 22 was like I'm just calling this episode the Catch 22 effect because mm-hmm. of the themes prevalent in Catch 22 um branching off into these other two novels in their own mm-hmm. in their own ways. It's not like yep. a dir- direct thing, but it's it's like it's like a weird kind of pseudo influence. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that it's just it's mind baffling sometimes. It it, mm-hmm. it it's it, it's kind of, it's one of those things where myself as a reader that tries to figure out like the the tiny details about things is just mm-hmm. I would just be screaming at the book, just like what are you doing? Oh yeah, these books will drive you insane, definitely. Uh. I, 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 I feel like I need like cholesterol or heart medication while um uh, re- while reading these novels. Mm, <laughs> That's some wonderful green tea. <laughs> mm. either, either either that or chamomile. Mm-hmm. God dang, I could go for a cup of chamomile right now. I'm not gonna lie. Absolutely. <laughs> but e- but either way, um, great great novels, inter- like interesting themes and just dang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> these stories hold up hannah thank yep. you thank you thank you for sharing these thank you for sharing Absolutely. these. thank you for giving me somewhere to um figure out in real time um <laughs> what these what these books have in common why i have been lumping them together for for years and not knowing why well, <laughs> well we geek out about the things we geek out about that's what we do here so absolutely anytime so um, I think that's going to be it. Yeah. I have nothing further to say about uh, toxic masculinity as a response to emasculation and vice versa. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, dang, just th- just throwing it all on there. But, un- yep. but understandable given the example in these books. Yep. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this episode of the General Geekery Podcast. If you guys like what you um, uh, have been listening to, then please make sure to um, uh, follow us wherever uh, we're found um, uh, on social media at General Geekery on uh, Facebook and on Twitter and at Gen Geek Podcast on Instagram. I'm almost certain I probably got those mixed up. I think you swapped them. I did swap them. I, anyway, I, they'll I, be correct in the... Uh... They'll be correct in the description for the episode. <laughs> But, um, yeah, you guys can check us out on social media on all of that. Um, you can check the podcast out on Spreaker, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever podcasts can be found, as well as on um, uh, my personal YouTube channel at Anime Rev Productions if you don't have access to either one of those services. Um, <laughs> Hannah, where can they check you out at? Well, um, I can be found every Monday at uh, 7.30 Central, uh, rolling dice with my party um, at uh, twitch.tv slash loaded dice adventures. Tons of fun, tons of fun. Um, You can find me on Instagram at Pythian Legume. And you can also find me on my other podcast, which is called Splank Nix, um, is where my my mom and I talk about literature, art, and uh, tabletop gaming um, through the generations. It's very, it's very, it's very, very good. There, Thank you. Some, some some very intelligent geeky women. Very yes, intelligent. It's most she's she's mostly intelligent, and I think I'm funny. But you know, <laughs> she she she's she's like a sage. She she's like yes. a sage of infinite knowledge. Oh, she would laugh if she knew you called her a sage. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I mean that with the utmost respect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, well. Okay, I guess it's my turn this time. As for me, guys, you guys can check me out on social media and Twitter, Instagram, and you guys can also check me out at uh, twitch.tv at the same name, Ryuzaki MK7. All of that will be in the description for the episode as well, as well as all of um, uh, the stuff that Hannah mentioned as well. So, that'll be it for this episode. This has been episode 27 of the General Geekery Podcast. So, uh... Yeah, this has been really awesome. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go read some books now. But before I do that, I'm just gonna remind you guys. Um, we'll see you next time. But always remember to uh, stay safe out there, stay sane, and mm-hmm. uh, always remember to keep your geek on. Always, clink clink. Yes.
Later, guys. Bye.